storage hedge that is all completely self-seeded from last year has now come up and it is in its absolute prime and it's going to stay like this for quite a few weeks and there's just bees and bumblebees everywhere from early in the morning until I was here about half past eight last night and there was still an absolute hive of activity, no pun intended, of of pollinators on these borage flowers, which um, are looking absolutely stunning. And it's just so easy to grow. I love this little fox glove here as well. It's like made its own little space for itself and said, give me a chance as well. But yeah, the borage, love it. If you need any flowers, you know, I may know someone. On the theme of pollinators, I just want to show you this kind of nasturtium patch also self-sown. So borage nasturtium are two amazing edible flowers. Well, with these, you can also eat the leaves. Same with borage, actually. So, but they self-sow. And it makes a, an amazing impact in terms of filling a space and it provides the edible qualities. So if you're looking for kind of fairly hands-off gardening, you want to look for things that self-seed readily. Nasturtium is another example. I just love the, the different flowers here. There's a little bumblebee. Hello. I wonder if, see, let's get up. <laughs> it's amazing. The bumblebee is so happy. You just pick the flower and it still stays in. And it's like, oh, need to return to the next one. So yeah, going to let these cascade down. It's now time here. This is the old um, perpetual spinach. So I'm going to now start removing this so I can open up some more space, maybe for some, maybe for some squash. So I'm going to work along here, clearing this up as best as possible. This of course is going to go to the chickens, um, but yeah, it's got this tiered Vigo garden bed. And so I, I'm now opening up this space underneath for some more things to to cascade over the sides and give a bit more space for the nasturtium. It's just a little one. Hello. Time for your Time for your daily greens, you know. Gotta stay healthy. Good morning, ladies. And where's 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 their patience, eh? <laughs> Watch out, it's coming in. Whee! Just want to highlight the sweet corn that's growing here. If you're looking for ways that are pretty easy of filling a space, but that makes it look like um, there's a lot of structure in the space and for something that grows really quickly, then you've got to absolutely grow sweet corn. And it's always a little bit of a risk growing them outside here. Um, last year it worked, so that, that's good. We're going to be doing it again this year. And currently the way the weather's going, they're going to do absolutely fine. But I, I just love how beautiful uh, these plants are as a structure. So I could imagine like a, a whole border of them in the future. Look, some little tottering by gently. It's just a nice faint smell. Not kind of the... Yeah, it's so subtle, it's so nice. A gentle touching by gently, a gentle smell. But these, these flowers here, these are grown for the savory uses rather than having more of that real kind of like floral sense, but also primarily for the rose hips because these create, apparently haven't seen them yet, massive rose hips. So from your perspective, the linear food forest might look very, very overgrown. However, around each tree and the soft fruit, there's actually a little clearing that we've made just um, using a scythe going around it. But I, I love the feel of this landscape at the moment, this kind of like swathing grassland landscape with these emergent trees poking through with the, like, the vibrant greens. It's, um, it, feels, uh, it feels really nice to be in, really relaxing. And I think all of the trees have 
relished having a tiny bit of rain earlier in the week. So I'm, I'm happy for them. I'm happy that I enjoy the grassland and everything's looking good. So on the subject of amazing kind of plants that self-seed, this here is Cape Gooseberry. I've got five different plants here that I've, I've actually removed from the polycrub. They had self-seeded and I decided to bring them here with the idea of growing them on but letting some of the fruits drop so they can self-seed and then next spring I can come through and pot up any of the volunteer seedlings. So again it's another amazing delicious crop that you never need to buy seeds for again. You get one packet and then that's it. So just be vigilant when you're going around the garden for plants and crops that are self-seeding and think could I actually just leave them there like I do with the borage and some of the nasturtiums and sometimes they'll just spread out a little bit over the place or can I relocate them like I'm doing for this you might be part of a local say gardening group or something so very often they'll do a plant swap and so actually potting up self seeders a couple of weeks before the plant swap to give them some time to develop the roots in the pot is a really nice way to then share the love with your fellow gardeners. So this year I finally feel that I've cracked basil. Um, Sam will know that we had a couple of years where it, it was never really working out, was it Sam? <laughs> so um, this is a, a, another variety that we're trying. This here is called lemon basil and it just has the most intense lemon smell um, with like a hint of basil, it's amazing. So. I just wanted to, to share that. So if you don't know what this is, this here is coriander or cilantro when it's gone to flower. And this is another amazing plant for self-seeding around the garden. So the, the amazing, well, firstly, the pollinators absolutely adore these little, uh, these little beautiful flowers. You got the leaves, you got the seeds, but what you want to do is just leave a few of your coriander to go to seed let the seeds dry on the plant and then kind of forget about it and then November just remove the plant. There's going to be a load of seeds that have just fall naturally on and around the surface and then next year you're going to get a bunch of coriander shooting up. Strawberries, they don't really fit the self-seeding category but they do spread so so much and to kind of put it into perspective all of these plants here I propagated from runners from just one small strawberry bed and we've propagated I'd say at least over a hundred plants from this space um, last year so these are now thank goodness protected from the blackbirds and they're starting to really really produce nicely and so later on today I'm going to come through to a proper big harvest but um ah oh. the fact that this it cost me absolutely nothing to do. The plants were free. I didn't really put down any bulk compost. It was just composted material. I let them grow. I haven't even bothered watering them and I'm having amazing strawberries. This, this is like kind of at the heart of what gardening is about. I wanted to give a shout out to my field beans. They've been through a lot. A terrible winter, black fly, rust, and they're just like, not for us. So um, it's now got to the stage where we are really harvesting these beans and uh, as you can see there's a lot of them. So well done guys, well done. <laughs> Part of the magic of gardening is understanding the, the plants that you grow and how you can propagate them either by seed or cuttings or saving tubers to then never have to buy them again. I've made a whole video which you can watch right here, which is all about a bunch of crops that you never need to buy seeds for again. So if you want more ideas, head over and check that one out.